Patellar instability is a common problem that can affect people and it involves the kneecap coming out of place. A lot of times this injury can happen over and over or they can have recurrent instability of the kneecap. When that happens, the problem is you can start to cause damage to the cartilage behind the kneecap and then that can lead to longer term issues such as developing arthritis behind the kneecap. For these reasons, we try to not let patients have multiple patellar instability events because we want to keep the health of their knee as good as possible for their symptoms now as well as for long term recovery and the long term health of the knee. When it comes to treating patellar instability, surgically, the most common treatment was always reconstruction of the ligament that holds the kneecap in place. As we learned more about this problem, we started to realize that there are many other factors that can lead to instability of the kneecap, which also started to lead to many other surgical procedures to treat it. It got to a point where it started to become confusing, and so what we've been able to do is take all of the literature that's available on patellar instability, combine it into something called a systematic review, but most importantly say what factors matter and which studies have shown that these factors matter the most consistently. So there could be a situation where a certain set of authors say these five factors matter and another one say a different set of five, but what's the overlap between those factors that seem to be the ones that are really common throughout all the reported literature. And so we've been able to show that there are certain anatomic factors that have to do with the bony alignment of the groove that the kneecap uh, lines up in or the trochlea as well as where the tendon inserts on the shin bone or something called the tibial tubercle. And these are probably two of the most important factors that can predict the risk of failure of isolated ligament reconstruction surgery. Because the risks are different from patient to patient, we try to tailor the treatments that we offer patients based on their specific risks. And for some patients, it makes more sense to be more aggressive with surgical treatment to avoid continued damage in the knee. And for other patients, it makes sense to treat them without surgery to avoid the risks associated with surgery. So we try to pick the right option based on what the patient comes in with. Being part of an academic institution, you know, we not only work on providing clinical care to patients, but we also try to develop the research around the care that we provide to try to understand what's really the best option for a patient and how well are we doing, you know, what are our actual outcomes. And to see patients when they are doing well and that we were able to predict that somebody would have a good outcome, to see that feedback loop to say, we put the time and effort in to try to figure out who we can treat appropriately, who we can really help, and then we see the effects on the patient in their life and getting back to the things that they want to do really is very rewarding and it gives us a sensation that everything that we're doing is for the right reasons.